In this video, I want to talk about AI prompt sequencing for brainstorming and narrowing down a researchable topic. Today, I'm going to talk about one prompt sequencing pattern from ChatGPT. You're encouraged to compare the output from this sequence with the other two that I've provided here from a Gemini Advanced. They're fairly similar, but you'll notice that there are some, uh, some differences. So in this prompt sequencing, what I've provided here is the prompt itself, where I've highlighted different areas or different parts of the prompt where you can fill in your own information depending on your own research objectives and your own interests, your own topic. Once you have this prompt, then you can, this is an example here of filling out this information. Now, in this case, I'm going to include six problems, identifying the top six problems related to English language learners' reluctancy to speak the L2, and provide the top five commonly proposed solutions for said problems as recommended advice on how to best motivate English language teachers to speak in public. So what I've done here is I've completed certain quantity of problems. I'm still brainstorming and thinking about certain types of problems that relate to a general problem that maybe uh, I am thinking about in terms of my own experience as a teacher or as an English language learner. And in this case, I've also indicated a quantity of proposed solutions. So I've, I've incorporated both the problem and solution within this prompt to see what kind of output that I, that I can get. And I have also included here rephrasing the general problem. So you're going to state the problem once here and then restate it here. And this just helps provide context. Context around the problem that you're uh, considering for your own research. So in this case, I continue provide it in a list. So I want to see a list of uh, the problems and the solutions. And also, I am looking for peer-reviewed journal articles that have been published within the last five years. Now, given this particular example, this is the output that it generated. And again, this, this prompt here is, is only an example. Of course, I encourage you to experiment and even with the prompt itself, not just with the information that I'm asking you to include here. But feel free to expand on this. Feel free to, um, you know, change around the text and see what kind of results that you get. But in this case, this is the output that, that I got. And you can compare this output with the output from these other sequencings. And there are differences, but sometimes it helps just to experiment with the same prompt sequence, generating it two or three times and just to see what kind of results that you get. But here I have a list of problems. And from this list, of course, this is fairly extensive. I would probably want to then focus on one problem from this list. And I have a list here of solutions. Again, probably too many solutions for most papers, depending on the length of your paper. But if you're writing a, a, let's say, a literature review, a 2,500 word literature review, perhaps you consider, let's say, three, anywhere from two to four possible solutions. In this example, I'm going to consider three different solutions. So you'll see here I have a list of five solutions. And from this list, let's say that I choose the first three as possible solutions that I want to research, that I want to read more about, and ultimately write about. So based on the output, I'm going to now create a second prompt as follows. Provide a list of five peer-reviewed journal articles to support the, and then I have here the ordinal number spelled out. So first, second, third, fourth, or fifth, depending on the output. So again, what I'm referencing in this second prompt is I'm trying to focus on which of these five. So again, I'm focusing on the first three. So the first is, I'm going to say the first solution, 
And this is what's going to be included in my prompt. So provide a list of five peer-reviewed journal articles to support the first commonly proposed solution mentioned above. Mentioned above. So what I'm doing is I'm referring back to the output that's already been generated. And I'm going to continue this same pattern. Five peer review journal articles to support the second commonly proposed solution mentioned above. And five peer review journal articles to support the third commonly proposed solution mentioned above. So again, it's a bit repetitive in this prompt or in this example, but you're likely to get more uh, accurate results if you tend to be a little bit repetitive in your in your prompting, in your prompts or in your examples that you're posting. From all the studies mentioned above, again, notice that I keep repeating mentioned above. From all of the studies mentioned, indicate any that could be replicated or replicated with minor changes within the context of te teaching elementary age children learning English as a second language in large classes of 40 or more students in a public school with novice English language teachers. Now, this last part, if we compare it now to the prompt, what I'm doing is I'm providing context. And the second part of the prompt that begins here, I'm looking for a study or studies that I could possibly replicate in terms of method, in terms of the participants that were used in the study, maybe in terms of the instruments or the procedure, the way in which data was collected. So I'm basically focusing on how I might replicate or repeat a very similar study in, from another context, in my own context, but again, in terms of methodology. This is not so much related to theory. We're going to create our own theory. But in terms of replicating a study, thinking about the method section, what I want to find is hopefully a couple of research studies that, I, that might provide a guide for me. Now, for those of you who are taking uh, academic writing and you're focusing only on the literature review at this point, you're not focusing on doing the actual study. Um, I am including this discussion in this video today as a point of reference. You'll probably think more seriously about replicating a study next semester because you're not going to be asked to do the actual research this semester. But again, I think it might help provide you some, some guidance in the type of research that you'll, you'll ultimately do next semester. Again, this is all very important when you're thinking about the study that you want to do, that you build a literature review that is, that's relevant, that can easily be applied to the context of the research that you're going to be doing next semester. So the second piece is designed to hopefully bring up some studies that are that that might help you with your own study. All right, so this is my example. And again, notice I've focused a lot on the context of the study. And, and you could argue that I have actually too many uh, things mentioned here. But again, this is where you can experiment and and think about the possible participants the schools that you have access to, what kind of schools, how old are the students that are likely going to be participating in your study, and so on. Because if you're wanting to focus on children and you know you have a school where you can do your study with children, then obviously the literature review will need to discuss or be relevant to learning among children. And so that's the point. So here's my second example. So this is the output that I got. So here I have the first solution and I have five uh, studies. Not all of them are within the last five years. So again, this could be a crapshoot. This could be, you might get all the studies within the last five years. You may not. Here's the second key solution that I mentioned and the studies and the third solution and the studies. And they have a section here for possible replicable studies. So again, this gives you 
a starting point. Uh, they, you may find that some of the studies listed here are not going to be helpful, but I think that it's a good way to start looking for certain studies. And I think if, as a brainstorming activity, especially when it comes to the problem and, and the solution, really, for that matter, um, it kind of helps guide you in thinking about possible problems and solutions that you want to match up. And that's the whole point, is to come up with one problem for your study, come up with several solutions that, that you want to research and later actually uh, do your own research on. And, and I think by just following this simple prompt sequence, it's going to be a good way to get started. So I would encourage you to take a look at the prompts that I've provided here and experiment with different, with different pieces of information. If you want to focus on 10 problems and get even a wider list of problems, or you want to come up with more than five possible solutions to see what kind of results you get, try it. Jim and I oftentimes will give you drafts. It will give you actually two or three different outputs to choose from. And you can oftentimes go in there and choose which one suits you better. I think if you compare these three, they're all uh, helpful, I think. I think all three of these sequence patterns that I've included here are, um, are useful. So just remember when you're accessing this page that the drop-down arrow is going to provide more information. So a lot of times some of the information is collapsed. So if you're not able to find something, just make sure that you're expanding all of the sections but i wanted to share this tip with you to take a look and see what kind of results you're getting i encourage you to talk with me and work with me also on the prompts that you're using if you have a prompt that you are using that's working really well that's different than what i have uh, let me know right so that we can kind of share our prompts with the group to see, again, what the, the best way to, to get the information from uh, AI to help us, again, in this brainstorming process, this brainstorming process of trying to find um, not only problems and solutions, but possible research and <clears throat> studies to help us to get started. One final thing I'll mention. Notice that here AI is capable of doing a lot more than what I'm sharing with you today. And uh, for those of you who are having me in class that we're taking, we're writing a literature review this semester, for our purposes, my suggestion is to limit your use of AI, the brainstorming process, to helping you find articles, and basically nothing more. Um, I would suggest not using AI for outlining, not using AI for drafting your text, not using AI for even checking your, your grammar. And we're, we're going to talk more about this uh, in class in terms of how I would suggest that you go about, let's say, cleaning up your text once you're, you're to a point where you're writing your drafts. And uh, we can get into the specifics there. But again, my suggestion at this point is to use AI, as I'm mentioning here, in terms of brainstorming, coming up with some problems and solutions for your study based on your own experiences and interests, making sure that you can find research. Because if you have a topic, and perhaps your topic is very interesting and insightful and very something that you really want to do, but if we can't find good articles, then maybe it's not the best option. Okay, so these are things that we're going to be talking about and working together on throughout the semester, especially at the beginning of the semester, as you are uh, narrowing down your topic, making sure your topic is researchable and also is something that is of interest to you and something that you feel you'll get more out of at the end of the day. When you, once you have completed the literature review and later next semester your research, you will uh, feel like you've learned something and that it will help you be a better teacher practitioner. So we'll conclude there. Again, let me know. Um, let me know how your AI prompting sequencing is working for you. And these are things we'll be working on in class.